This video is going to be showing how we can create viscous fluids using the viscosity tools in Houdini. So let's get started. Here in my scene, I have a tray that's already prepared and it has some thickness. And the same with these pipes, they also have some thickness. And in this pipe, there's a tiny little sphere that we are going to emit the flip fluid particles from and turn it into a viscous fluid. And that's actually this guy here, this little sphere is, uh, I've named it emit fluid. If I double click inside, it's literally a sphere and then I transformed it. So that's my sphere and then I just moved it upwards a bit and then in the center of the pipe. So I'm going to hit the U key to jump back out. And the first thing we're going to do is select the pipe and be careful not to pick the tiny sphere and shift select the tray. And I'm going to click on collisions and we're going to set them as static objects to collide with the flip fluid particles. So just click on it. And you can see that we have an Autodop network created for us. If we double click to go inside and hit the L key to lay out our nodes, there's our pipe and there's our tray that's going to uh, collide with our fluids. So let's hit the U key. And now we're going to set that little sphere to emit the particles. So click on the particle fluids tab and then click on emit particle fluid. And it's going to be hard to find that sphere in there. So I'm just going to select in here and then hit the enter key. And I have no fluid object to emit into. So I'm going to hit the enter key again. Now, here is this funky shape and this is the representation of the sphere and we are going to adjust the resolution of that uh, amongst a few other things. So we're just going to be here in this area quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is set a quick mark so I don't have to go back up to object level with the U key, double click to go inside the auto dot network and then hit the U key to jump back out and then hop back in here and then back and forth a couple times. So I'm going to hit control one to set my quick mark and I'm going to hit the U key. Uh, I'm going to also lay out my nodes and then I'm going to double click inside the Autodop network and hit the L key. And now I'm going to hit control two with my mouse in the network editor window to set my second quick mark. Now, if I hit the one key, I'm taken to the emit fluid node and then the two key is going to take me to the Autodop network. And now I can hit the tilde key to go back between the two, which is way faster than doing what I just described earlier before this part. So now let's go to hit the one key and hit the P key to get the parameter pane. And now I'm just going to change the resolution of this uh, sphere here. So I'm going to set it to something smaller and you can see that it's much better now. And the SDF from geometry, I'm going to change the edge location to 0 0.05 and um, maybe a bit smaller. Okay. And I also want some velocity with the fluids. So I'm going to, in the velocity volumes, I'm going to turn on add velocity. I'm going to turn off the visualize because I don't need to see that. And I'm going to set the Y to minus two and Z to three. And now I'm just going to set the frame range to 90 and turn on real time toggle and play it back. So if I zoom out, it's totally going through the pipe, which is not what we want. So I'm going to stop that. And now I'm going to hit the two key or tilde and I'm going to click on the pipe and under collisions, I'm going to turn off display geometry and turn on collision guide. So that's our collision geometry of the pipe, which now you can see why the fluid particles were totally going through because this is not a pipe. So I'm going to increase the divisions by quite a bit. And that's an accurate representation of our pipe. All right, we're going to do the same with the tray and we'll change that as well. Uh, make sure that you turn on collision guide. So 0 0.01 is pretty high, so, and that's good enough. So now I'm going to turn off collision guide and also the same for the pipe because that's going to cost us and turn back on display geometry for both. Okay, so now let's play it back. And you can see we have a okay stream, but we want to have more particles. So we'll click on the flip fluid object and increase the particle separation. I'm also going to, in the physical tab, we're going to turn on viscosity finally. So I'm going to set it to 1000 and just general rule of thumb, you probably want the density to be at least twice or three times the amount of viscosity. So I'm going to set it to 3000 and let's play it back. So we get way more particles because of the particle separation being reduced, but the viscosity is not really there and that. So if I just stop the playback, 
the viscosity is not there because we need to click on the flip solver and where it says particle motion there's the viscosity tab we need to enable viscosity so we're just going to do a few things before we play it back so if you notice this little flashing yellow thing it's our flip container uh, and it's calculating all of the space for potential fluid interactions and it's pretty expensive because we only need like a sliver of that so like we're just wasting the, the calculations here. So I'm just gonna adjust the boundaries of our flip container to something like that. And also for particle motion, we're gonna turn off uh, collision detection and also receding. And now let's go back to the viscosity tab. I'm also gonna turn on slip on collision, which is gonna give us some slippage. So I'm gonna set that to 0.6 and now let's play it back. It's like super slow right now because it's viscous. So um, what we need to do is increase the density and maybe tweak the velocity. So let's click on the flip fluid and first we'll just add another zero and let's see what we get. Yeah, that's better, but still a little bit more faster would be nice. Let's set that to 80,000 and that's our viscous fluids. So just to give you an idea of the numbers that you should work with, and depending on the scale of your scene, that obviously affects it as well. But generally, you'll need to tweak the, obviously, viscosity amount, the particle separation, and the velocity as well. And that's how you can create viscous fluids in Houdini. Thanks for watching.